Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Bun Med where we discuss concise medical knowledge you can fit inside of a bun. This is the last part of a four part series on interpretation of ECGs. In this video we will look at the ST and T wave changes and how these correspond to ischemia of the heart. Um, the next aspect is ST um, segment or ST interval and this is the time between the end of ventricular depolarization, so in other words, the end of the QRS complex and the start of the T wave or the start of ventricular repolarization. And it's normally around 0.08 seconds or two small squares. Um, but the thing with the ST interval is not the most important thing is not how long it is, but more where it is. So the ST um, segment or interval is perhaps the most important thing to look at um, when you're thinking about uh, an MI or myocardial infarction. And you can see here that this is the normal ST segment, so it's about the same height as the PR interval. Now, in a condition called a STEMI, the ST interval is much higher than the PR interval. And this is a condition, but effectively it stands for um, ST elevation myocardial infarction. And then you have the opposite of that, which is non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, where the ST interval is actually lower than the PR interval. And um, this is useful because it helps us to identify how severe a heart attack is. So a STEMI is usually much more severe than an NSTEMI. And this is because you have complete blockage of a vessel that's supplying the heart. Whereas an n STEMI, the blockage is usually partial, which is why you get the difference in uh, how the ECG looks. So if we just quickly talk about myocardial infarctions, um, remember that the coronary arteries supply the heart from the outside and then they go in towards the centre. So in a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction where you have a partial blockage, what that means is that actually some of the heart muscle will still be okay, but the heart muscle that is furthest away from the arteries, in other words, the, the heart muscle that is closest to the centre, um, will actually be at a higher risk of developing ischemia and infarction. And so this is what we term a subendocardial myocardial infarction. So what that means is that the inside of the heart or the endocardium is most likely to be affected. Contrast that to a STEMI um, where there is complete blockage of a, of a coronary artery. Um, what actually happens is that because there's virtually no blood supply going to that area of the heart, the whole thickness of the heart muscle actually becomes ischemic or infarcted and that's what we call a transmural infarct. And then the final aspect is the T wave. So um, the most important thing to know about is that the T wave can either be um, upright or it can be inverted. Um, now a normal T wave should be upright in all leads uh, except AVR and V1. So if it's inverted in V1, then that's absolutely normal. If it's inverted in any other leads other than AVR or V1, then it may actually suggest a um, end STEMI. So you can see here that the T wave not only um, that uh, the ST elevation, the, the sorry ST segment is actually normal, but the T wave in there is T wave inversion. Um, and so this is just something else that could potentially point towards um, an end STEMI. So that's everything that we needed to cover in order to systematically approach an ECG. So let's just have a look at an example bringing everything together. So if I were to do this, I would start by, of course, confirming the patient details, when it was taken, and then look at the calibration. So that looks like it's about 10 squares, so that's completely fine. And looking at the speed of the paper, so it's 25 millimeters a second, which is completely normal. The next thing you need to look at is the heart rate. So um, just looking at how many ECG complexes there are, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
So yeah, there's 12 ECG, there's 12 QRS complexes, so that tells us that the heart rate is about 72, which is normal. The next thing you need to look at is the rhythm. So is the rhythm normal? Um, so yep, each um, QRS complex is about the same distance from each other. So this is a regular rhythm. Um, the next thing I'm going to look at is the P waves. So all you need to say is, is the P wave present? Uh, oops, uh, is the P wave present? Yes, the P wave is present and it is upright. Um, the next aspect to look at is the PR interval. So it's a little bit small, um, but if we have a look at one, two, three, six, there's approximately um, Yeah, so it's it's about five um, small squares, so 0 0.2, so it is a bit on the on the high side, but uh, otherwise that seems to be normal. Um, and then we're going to move on to the QRS complex. So with the QRS complex, it's important to say is it is it normal, is it narrow, or is it broad? Um, these QRS complexes are are normal, so they're not significantly wide. Um, and then the other thing to look at is the ST segment. So is the um, ST at any point higher than the PR interval? And no, I can't see any areas where it's higher than it should be. And then the final thing is to look at the T wave. So is the T wave present? Yes, it is. Um, is it upright in all leads except possibly V1 and AVR? Um, so in all of the leads, you can see it's positive. It's negative in AVR, but that's normal. It's positive in V1, but that's also fine. Um, and otherwise, it's positive in all the other leads. So in summary, this is a sinus um, sinus rhythm ECG. And that's everything you really need to know um, for uh, interpreting ECGs. So thank you very much for watching the video. We hope you found it helpful. Please do look out for the rest of the ECG series on our YouTube channel. And if you found it helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments and we'll get back to you when we can. Thank you.